All right, let's get started. Thank you for joining our webinar, High Performance Data Tables with Dash and AG Grid. My name is Adam and I am Plotly's Community Manager. Today, I am joined by Plotly's Chief Technology Officer and co-founder, Alex Johnson. Alex's work was monumental in developing Plotly's graphing libraries and the Dash app framework. He studied quantum physics at Harvard and the Niels Bohr Institute and has a background in material science for renewable energy. Alex, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Adam. So before we get started, just a reminder that you can ask questions in the side panel here. If we don't have the time at the end, we will answer your questions via email. We will also send you the recording, open source code, and slides after the presentation. All right, let's get started. Alex, the, mic's, the mic is yours. Take it away. All righty. Um, so before we get started, uh, I just want to give a little bit of context on where Plotly came from. Uh, so in 2009, I joined a small company that was developing a new kind of solar panels. Um, I was hired to do physics and material science, right? That's, that's what my background originally is. Um, but the company was creating a ton of data with all the experiments we were doing. Um, and at that point, I wasn't a professional developer, uh, but I knew enough coding to be able to play with my data. And what we found is that there just were no good tools out there to allow our team to share our data and analysis um, without reducing it to PowerPoint slides, right? So along with Jack Palmer, who was a coworker of mine at the time, I volunteered to build some specialized tools for the company. Um, kind of had to give myself a crash course in um, web technologies and SQL and all that. Um, and these tools really revolutionized the way that the engineers at that company um, worked together. And so in 2013, after Jack and I left that company, we took what we learned and started Plotly. Fast forward to today, uh, Dash and the Plotly graphing libraries are helping millions of data scientists all around the world to do more with their data. And they're supported by uh, Plotly's team of uh, nearly 80 employees who are also scattered around the world, uh, centered in Canada, but we've also got people in Europe, uh, the US, uh, and one or two in Asia. All right, today's webinar is about the Dash AG Grid component. And we've been developing this component for several years. Um, but uh, we're really excited now to be able to release it open source. Um, so in the, in the uh, webinar today, I'm gonna first do a demo of this component and how you can use it in a Dash app. I'll walk through what this looks like in code. Uh, and then I'll talk about why we decided to open source it, how this component relates to the Dash data table. Um, I'll talk about AG Grid community and enterprise additions, um, then what this means for Dash enterprise. And at the end, we'll have some time for Q&A. So what is AG Grid? Um, well, AG Grid, the company, uh, started just a little while after Plotly did, and they have a pretty similar story to ours. Their founder needed to show rich tabular data uh, in websites that he was building, and he didn't find any available tools that had the right combination of flexibility and performance. So he built the one he'd want to use himself. Um, today, AG Grid is the best way uh, to display and work with tabular data in your browser. And the company focuses 100% on this use case 
Uh, so it's only going to keep getting better and better. Uh, you can display, as you see here, you can display mixtures of, of text, numbers, uh, graphics, uh, and charts. You can do this in pretty much any way that you can think of. Uh, yeah, and any kind of interaction you can think of, you can do with a G-Grid. Um, Now, AGGrid focuses heavily on JavaScript developers. Uh, that's their core, their core um, uh, market that they're going after, and they've got a really strong fan base there. Uh, what makes us excited about this is we have an opportunity to bring that same functionality, that same power, to a whole new set of users, and that's the Python data science crowd. Um, and we're doing that by as you said, wrapping a dgrid in a dash component. So let's jump in. Um, I'm going to demo a, a simple app. Um, it's a, you can see the source code at this link here uh, in our open source repository. So here's the open source repository. Um, and we've also deployed this app uh, at the link I'm showing here. If you want to play with this right now, uh, we have released it to the PyPI, uh, so you can pip install it. I will caution you, though, this is an alpha release. We expect to have a number of breaking changes between now and uh, when we get to the full 2.0 release. So um, I wouldn't use this in, in a production app just yet, because we know things are going to be changing uh rapidly over the next couple of weeks as we get it ready for its uh its full 2.0 debut um but i would love to uh to have any of you give this a shot and see what you think um, we'll, we would really love to have any feedback um, all right so here's the um simple app that i've uh i'm going to demo today it's, it's got two charts at the top. And there's this candlestick chart um, showing stock prices over time. There's a pie chart showing uh, your holdings in this, uh, this fictional portfolio. And then we've got the star of the show, the AG grid component at the bottom here. Um, you can see a bunch of interactivity. So if I click on a row, this, um, this chart at the top changes to be that company's stock history. Uh, and if I change the, some of these other things, other columns are editable. So you can control, right? This column is not editable, no matter how much I click on it. But over here, I can say, well, actually, I'd like to buy some more Apple stock because, uh, yeah. If I start selling pies. Okay, so I'm going to buy some more of that. Uh, and I'd like to um, sell some Amazon because I'm scared of piranhas. Uh, okay, so now let's buy some more Apple stock. Let's go up to 200. You can see the pie chart up here changes. Change the Amazon, sell all of that. Pie chart changes again. So this is all all connected up together um, via the dash callbacks that you all know and love. So let's see what this looks like in code. Um, this is the um, the file that I mentioned before. At the beginning, we have all of the normal imports, and there's just one new one, import dash ag grid, and we'll just call it uh, DAG for short. And then the dash imports, uh, we also use dash bootstrap components in this app, um, as well as pandas, Poly Express, uh, and then we'll be pulling some stock data with live finance. So the first sec First thing we do is we set up our app, uh, and I'm using the dash bootstrap component dark theme. 
then uh, the next whole section is just preparing our stock data. And the result of all that is we're putting it into a data frame. <clears throat> now we start into the AG grid specific code. Um, so one of the most important things that you want to do is set up the columns of your grid. Um, first column here is a very simple one. It's uh, the ticker field in our data frame. And then the label we're going to put at the top of it is uh, stock ticker. So you can think of field as kind of the column ID and header name. Uh, that's what shows up at the top. So that's this first field here. Okay. Um, and then the other columns, or, yeah, the, the other columns get a little bit more uh, involved than that. Um, one that I really want to call out here, uh, there's this last close price, uh, which was the price field. Uh, and that has a really powerful um, key in it called value formatter. You can see I'm, I'm writing here um, a bit of code in this value formatter. And that's this is actually JavaScript code, which says, uh, make sure that this value is a number and then convert it to a fixed two decimal points. Um, one thing that I, uh, I really want to call attention to here is this dangerously allow HTML field. Um, this is not part of AG Grid itself. It's something that we've added to our wrapper component. And what's going on here is, um, as you can see in this value formatter, um, we're writing code as a string. And for AG Grid itself, um, because they are focused on a, a JavaScript um, audience where you know, most of these fields are, are provided by the developer and there will only be a few that are uh, commonly subject to user input and the de developer will know about that. Um, they're, they're not concerned with this having uh, code in a string here, but if you're familiar with uh, web security and uh, you know, believe me, if you're not, uh, probably for the best, it's a, it's a real minefield. Um, but having code in a string opens you up to the possibility of what's known as a cross-site scripting attack. Now, exactly how that applies to Dash apps is, is a little bit involved, and it's only a subset of Dash apps that have this concern. Um, it's, it's really those apps where you're saving um, the, the layout of the app um, with one user and then a different user can pull that up later. Um, but that's a really important use case to us because it gets used in reporting and we in fact have a whole product around that, the uh, snapshot engine. So we wanna be uh, very careful about running any code that might possibly be user provided and that's why we uh, require it to have this dangerously allow HTML um, flag set on it. Uh, that said, we're uh, hard at work right now on making that unnecessary um, because we we do have a way of safely running uh, this kind of expressions as code um, without giving access to all of the dangerous parts of the browser like your cookies and, and private data. Um, so for the moment, this is needed, but by the time we get to the 2.0 release, uh, it'll only be in, in rare edge cases where you will need that field. All right, let's look a little farther down. Um, the market value field is another really interesting one because that one shows uh, a calculated value. Um, and that's here in this value getter. Um, you can see what it's doing here is taking the price um, field from our from our uh, data frame and multiplying it by the quantity to get the total value of our holding of this stock. Um, and so you can see over here, uh, if I go look at Apple, 
you know, 200 times 141 gives us this 28,000. But if I now change that to only 100, look how this field updates. And in, even more than that, it showed you uh, for a brief time uh, with a red down arrow that it was, it was decreasing. If I go back up again, yep, so now it's a green up arrow and it went up to the new value. So this is a really powerful uh, feature in AG Grid. Um, and uh, spoiler alert, that's one of the ones that you don't get out of Dash Data Table. Um, so it involves this value getter um, that allows you to calculate it based on other data in your, in your table. And then there's this uh, cell renderer, uh, AG Animate Show Change cell renderer that uh, that shows you in those red and green arrows when things have changed. All right, moving on, we have uh, uh, a drop-down cell for position by cell or hold. Um, and this is how you set that up. And then we have an editable text field for comments at the end. Now, this is is fairly verbose. There's a lot you can do here. And so one of the things AG Grid does to make this easier is to provide a default column definition. And each of the final columns that you make is going to be a combination. Uh, first, it'll apply these, and then it'll apply all of the individual columns on top of that. Uh, another feature that's uh, being highlighted in this demo is conditional styling. So for example, we can see that the, the buy cells uh, get a green background. The uh, cell cells get a red background. Right? So that's where this red and green comes from. And the, the column of shares gets a dark gray background. So that's how we set that up. So it's a a really flexible and um, takes a little while to uh, get used to this syntax, but once you do, it's fairly intuitive and, and can do a whole lot of interesting things. Okay, so now we're ready to, yes, Adam. Um, before you move on to the to the exciting table itself and its properties, can we go back uh, back up for a sec to the columns? Um, to just yep. as a, there you go, as a, as a brief summary for now, this you mentioned when this will be fully released most likely we will not have to worry about dangerously allow html true false everything will work in the back end but if our audience works with the table um today this week until that changes is the recommendation that every time we use a value getter and a value formatter we we add this line of code of dangerously allow html true that's right at, at the moment that's required if you don't provide dangerously allow HTML true, um, then these value getter and value formatter just won't do anything. They'll be ignored. Oh, perfect, yeah. thank you. And, then the, um, and if you were to look in the JavaScript console, you'd see a message about that. Oh, okay, perfect. And the last question about the columns. I see there is um, in almost every column, or in some of them, it says type, uh, write, align. Is there is there a best practice if columns are text or columns are are numbers? What side they're aligned to? You know, I think that's uh, up to a lot of uh, personal preference. But yeah, a lot of times, especially if you're using fixed precision, uh, it's nice to write align the numbers because then the decimal points uh, will all line up, and so it makes it easier to read. Whereas text uh, tends to be easiest to read if you left align it. Got it. Thanks, Alex. Okay, uh, so now we'll move on to uh, creating the AG Grid component. So here's where we do that. Uh, just like normal, we give it an ID, uh, and AG Grid has a very nice theming system built in. So here's uh, here's how that works, just by setting the class name uh, to one of the predefined AG Grid themes. And then we set the, the column definitions, uh, the row data, and a few other uh, 
a few other parameters just to get the exact behavior we want. And I'll notice, uh, I'll, I'll mention, here's the dangerously allow HTML again at the table level. Um, and there's some, some subtleties to why both the columns and the table have that, that I won't go into here, but uh, that'll be in the documentation. Then we set up uh, the, the other components we need, the candlestick uh, and the pie charts. Um, and we put this all into a normal dash layout. And here I'm using, again, the uh, dash bootstrap components to get the layout I want. Now let's look at the callbacks that are attached to this, this app. Um, the first one is here setting the candlestick figure whenever the selection changed uh, property of the grid is updated. And that's the, this is the callback that when you click on a row, it changes which data is showing up top here. Okay, so how does that work? Well, the selection changed um, input gives you this selected row object. And that selected uh, row basically just looks like a small subset of the whole table. So you can dig into it and say, well, selected row, it just has one row, so we'll get index zero, and then we'll pull out the fields we want um, using the the same names that we had above, right? So we had uh, we had ticker, we had company, and those got used in the data frame. And so those those get pulled out there, and then all we're going to do is use that ticker and company um, to to generate the right data we want for the candlestick. Uh, and that should look <clears throat> familiar to anyone who's used plotly.py before. Okay, and then our next uh, callback is with the, the uh, pie chart over on the side here. That takes, um, sorry, it's going to output to the asset allocation figure and takes as an input uh, cell value changed. And that's basically just as a way to let us know that something changed in the data, whereas the road data itself is used here as state. Um, and uh, all we actually care about is what that road data is. So we get that out uh, and um, turn that into a data frame here. And then we massage that data frame into the shape we want to give a uh, Plotly Express pie chart. And that's it. We run the app and it does all the cool things you saw over here. Uh, notice that I did not have to write a callback in order to do this uh, calculated field uh, because that's built into AG Grid itself. Uh, I did not have to write a callback in order to um, set these drop downs or, or make this field editable here. Um, I just had to make a callback to connect things inside the table to these two charts outside. All right. So, um, Alex, one question before you move on. The, what, this table has what, six, seven, seven rows. Uh, many of the tables that I work with, and I'm sure our audience works with, have hundreds and maybe thousands of rows. Do you mind sharing with us, please, first of all, how do we um, uh, activate the filter? You know, what do we do in the code to activate the filter? Mm -hmm. And then maybe show us an example or two of how this filter works. Yeah. So the filtering system that AG Grid has built in is pretty flexible. Um, by default, it'll give you a contains filter, right? So if I type A here, um, I get everything that has an A in it, even if it's at the end. Um, but they have other options as well. You can do uh, doesn't contain, you can do an exact equality or a starts with, ends with, a whole lot of options there. Um, to, um, to enable that, I believe you just set filter to true. And we have that in the default column definitions, so all of the columns in our table will get that. Uh, as to the quantity of data, um, we'll talk a little bit more about that 
later on uh, when we get to the differences between AG Grid community and enterprise. But um, up to something like tens of thousands of rows and kind of depends on um, exactly how quick you want this to load and how much effort you want to put in it. But up to something like tens of thousands of rows, you can just uh, send that all to the browser and AG Grid will handle it just fine. If you want to go up to millions of rows, um, you'll want to be doing some, some filtering of that data on the server side before you sent it up to the browser because the browser will, will choke on that much data. All right, um, before we move on, let me just also mention the uh, documentation app that we are currently developing inside the Dash AG Grid repo. Um, so if you go, if you go look at the repository that I uh, mentioned back here in the docs folder, uh, app.py is this documentation app. And this, this app is made uh, basically to mirror the official AG Grid docs, which are linked up here. Um, we, um, alongside getting this component ready for its full open source release, we will be merging this docs app into the main uh, Dash docs, which I've got linked here. You can see dash.plotly.com, the main Dash docs. Um, but as I said, these are meant to mirror the official docs, and we expect that um, you know those docs will be um, will have extra detail that's not in here. Um, and because we've worked pretty hard to make all the props similar between our wrapper and the original AG Grid component, um, I do expect that it'll be fairly easy for Dash developers to read those official AG Grid docs and apply them back to their Dash AG Grid component. Um, but most of the important things we intend to have built into our own um, documentation. So you can see a whole bunch of information about columns, about rows, about layout and style. Right? There's a whole lot of options here, and this is all described. So if you want you know, multiple click selections, um, you, can, you can see that. Okay. All right. So, um, so why are we open sourcing? Dash AG Grid. We first wrote Dash AG Grid uh, a couple of years ago for a customer of ours. Um, and uh, at first, we kept this closed source as part of Dash Enterprise uh, so we could really focus on the use case of that individual customer. But over time, uh, more and more of our customers started using it. You know, it was included in Dash Enterprise, so, so all of our enterprise customers had access to it and more and more of them started using it uh, in all sorts of industries. So from pharma to finance to food services. Um, and as a result, we, we made the component more flexible to be able to accommodate everything that all these customers wanted to do. At the same time, um, community members who had seen AG Grid, you know, maybe they were also involved in some some uh, traditional uh, full stack app programming, uh, or maybe they just you know saw it in some other applications that they were looking at. Um, community members started asking about this, uh, and we realized that we could make this component even better, uh, and we could get it into the hands of a lot more of our users if we released it open source. Um, the screenshot I'm showing here is from the community.plotly.com uh, website, the Plotly's community forum. Uh, if you are not a member of that community forum, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's a really active place, a uh, really welcoming place to ask any sort of questions you've got or, or just to share what you're working on with other people who might be interested in the same thing. Um, so the screenshot here is uh, the top users on that forum in terms of uh, how many likes they received 
uh, for their posts. Uh, as you can see, I really shouldn't be at the top of that list at all. Uh, I'm just there because it was from my account that I was making this. Uh, but you can see Adam there, our community manager. Uh, and what I'm really excited about is that uh, these next two people on the list, uh, Anne-Marie Ward and Brian Schroeder, uh, have, have both been very excited about Dash AG Grid, and the two of them are working with us to help get it ready for its open source release. So thank you uh, to both Anne-Marie and Brian. Um, your, your contributions to this have been really amazing, and I hope we get to keep working together for a long time. All right, um, next question on a lot of people's mind, how does Dash AG Grid compare with Dash Data Table? Um, we, you know, as, as soon as we started thinking about Dash at the very beginning, um, we knew that it would need to include tabular data and Dash Data Table has been our official answer to that since the beginning. Um, but there's so many things that people want to do with tabular data. Um, so many ways you want to display it, so many things you want to include in those displays. Um, we've built a lot of those use cases into Dash Data Table over the years, uh, but it's it's quite clear AG Grid does a whole lot more. Uh, things like uh, movable columns, uh, built-in calculations that we already saw, uh, grouped rows and drill down. Um, and they do it all with a really beautiful style uh, and, a really, and a modern look. That styling is uh, certainly possible to get in Dash Data Table, but it's a lot easier and cleaner and crisper to achieve with AG Grid. And you can see that in the results of apps that people have made. Um, looking at some of the specific uh, kinds of features, you know, editing, filtering, sort, sorting, paging, um, those kind of functionalities, they work a little bit differently in the two systems, but both Data Table and AG Grid can do them. Similarly, with conditional formatting, um, server-side paging and filtering, uh, again, we'll, we'll touch on this a little more when we get to AG Grid Enterprise, um, but both of them can do that. Um, when you get to cell contents, uh, you know, what you can put in a cell, um, there is a good deal of flexibility with the Dash data table. You can put text uh, and numbers and, and such, as well as markdown uh, and dropdown menus, but AG Grid has a whole lot more available to you uh, than that. Similarly with styling, both of them are quite flexible, but what you get out of the box with AG Grid uh, looks a lot cleaner. And uh, yeah, okay. Uh, then some of the interactivity, um, columns like resizing and reordering columns interactively, that's not possible in Dash Data Table, but comes out of the box with Dash AG Grid. Um, and that along with some of the styling differences really come down to an architectural difference between the two components. Um, Dash Data Table is built on a, an HTML table. Um, you know, kind of a, an old standard uh, HTML element that um, you know is meant for tabular data, but it's not as flexible as people want in a, a modern interactive uh, website. Whereas um, AG Grid built their tables out of divs, um, which they can then move around um, as they please and resize in, in much more convenient ways. Uh, in addition, calculated data. So again, that's not something you can do with Dash Data Table, but it uh, comes built in with Dash AG Grid. And then uh, grouped rows and drill down effects uh, do not exist in Dash Data Table. But if you get AG Grid Enterprise, you have access to that. Um, 
I will say, um, in case anybody is worried about this, Dash Data Table is not going away. Uh, we will continue to support it for a long time. But I'm really excited that we're able to add AG Grid to the open source Dash ecosystem. Um, I would, you know, if you are creating a new app, uh, and again, for, for production purposes, uh, hold off until we've got the full open source release. But if you're creating a new app, um, I would definitely consider using Dash AG Grid for it. If you already have an app with Dash Data Table in it and you're happy with that, then fantastic. Keep keep going, keep using it. Uh, but if you're enticed by AG Grid, migrating from Data Table to AG Grid uh, isn't too hard. Uh, it's got a it's got a little bit of overhead to it. Um, good news is the primary data model of the two. Uh, this is the, the data prop in Dash Data Table, and it's the row data prop in AG Grid. Um, those are identical, right? They're both lists of dictionaries where the, the keys in those dictionaries um, are the column IDs. And, and so that's good. A lot, a lot of the, uh, the input and the output that um, depends on that. Um, that data uh, will be identical, so your callbacks there won't need to change much. Uh, similarly, um, column defs for AG Grid looks a lot like uh, the columns crop for Dash Data Table, uh, although the specific fields that are inside them are quite different. Uh, so that'll take a little bit more massaging. Both components have a very long list of props. Um, in fact, in the AG Grid case, there are so many props that uh, when we first made this component, it broke in Python 3.6. Uh, we fixed that since then. Um, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, I'm sure nobody on this call is still using Python 3.6, right? That's that's a dinosaur by now. Um, but yeah, uh, both of these components have a whole lot of props, and uh, not all of them have obvious analogs in the other component um, but uh, once we get the final 2.0 release out we'll put out a migration guide that helps make these correspondences easier all right uh, so yeah let's talk a little bit about ag grid community versus ag grid enterprise um, so this is a quote from the ag grid website uh, ag grid community is free and open sourced under the mit license AG Grid Enterprise comes with dedicated support and more enterprise style features. AG Grid gives for free what other grids charge for, then provides AG Grid Enterprise where it goes above and beyond. In order to use AG Grid Enterprise in Dash AG Grid, uh, you don't have to change components. It's the same component. Uh, all you have to do is uh, enable enterprise modules equals true. So that turns on the enterprise mode and then uh, provide a license key for that that you obtain by buying it from AG Grid. Um, today's PSA, please don't put this license key in your source code. Please make it an environment variable. Uh, otherwise, it will get out into the wrong hands. Um, all right, enough said there. Oh, so uh, just to dive into that a little bit. Um, so here's from AG Grid's website, the uh, a comparison of community and enterprise features. And um, you can see that you know, all of the standard features of your tables uh, are in the community and the enterprise. Where there start to be differences uh, here on the server side row model. Um, so that's where we were talking about really big data you want to be able to fetch the relevant pieces of that from the server uh, when they're needed, rather than having to push it all up um, initially into the browser. Um, that is only available with um, AG Grid Enterprise. Uh, I will note, interestingly enough, that um, Dash Data Table has the ability to do server-side uh, row filtering um, and, and server-side paging uh, built in. 
So that's a little bit of a difference in if you're just staying in the open source world. Um, similarly, the ability to select uh, regions of the table rather than just single rows, um, that's an enterprise feature for AG Grid, whereas it's built into the open source dash data table. Um, moving on, some advanced filtering is only on the enterprise side. Um, some, uh, right, so this is about drill down uh, cells um, and some more of the kind of drill down and pivot table features um, are only available in enterprise. And uh, another one that's enterprise only for AG Grid, but Dash Data Table has built in is exporting to Excel. Okay, and then there are a few others. Um, right, charting uh, is pretty basic if you have AG Grid community, but it gets much more flexible in the enterprise version. All right, um, so now let's talk a little bit about. Um, what this means for Dash Enterprise. Um, so just to make this crystal clear, AG Grid Enterprise and Dash Enterprise are completely separate things. Uh, you can use AG Grid Enterprise with the open source Dash AG Grid um, just by buying an AG Grid license. And the same is true inside Dash Enterprise. Uh, just because you have Dash Enterprise, if you want to use AG Grid Enterprise, you still need an AG Grid license. Um, but there uh, are a lot of cool things that come with using Dash AG Grid inside of Dash Enterprise. So let's go look at an app that does this. Um, so here's, here's a Dash Enterprise app that uses both the Dash Design Kit and a Snapshot Engine along with an AG Grid table. Now this is a pretty basic AG Grid table, um, but you can still see that it has a bunch of really cool features like reorderable columns. If I want to have the ticker and the asset name next to each other to easily read that, I can do that. If I want to resize, uh, that's built in here. Um, and one of the really cool things, so this, this app uses Dash Design Kit. So if I edit this theme, um, it comes up the design kit theme editor and you can see that, for example, um, the fonts here are all sans serif, but let's say I want to go to a dark theme with serif fonts and here's that one. Um, that flows through to everything in the app. So the whole app turned dark um, and everything from the graph at the bottom to AG Grid, to the drop-down uh, component up here, it all changed font. So everything stayed consistent throughout. Um, so that's one of the really nice features. Uh, and then this app also includes a snapshot engine. So if I generate a report from it, uh, now AG Grid is not only uh, powering the web interface here, but it can be the star of my PDF reports as well. Um, one thing that I I uh, didn't I'm not showing here, uh, but does uh, really cool things with Dash AG Grid is Dash Embedded, and this is if you've got a bigger website uh, that you need to incorporate your Dash app into, um, you that that app will look like a single component in your bigger website, and you can include Dash AG Grid anywhere that you can. Um, you can imagine by uh, using Dash Embedded. And those are just the um, app components inside of uh, Dash Enterprise that interact directly with AG Grid, but there is a whole lot more to the Dash Enterprise platform. Um, that all is a topic for another time, but it uh, basically boils down to these three pieces, uh, scaling, collaboration, and administration. Um, so that's Dash AG Grid. Uh, I hope this has given you all a flavor of why we're so excited uh, to be able to release this component open source. 
And let me now pass the ball back to Adam to wrap things up. Thank you, Alex. Just checking out, can you see the, the slide screen? Yep. Cool. One second. Okay. So, Alex, thank you so much for this very informative uh, technical workshop. Uh, before we dive into questions from the audience, I'd like to remind everyone of a few upcoming events, community events. So, Later today, in about two hours, we have a Plotly Dash community meetup where we will discuss ongoing projects and a few opportunities for community contributions. Uh, I know it's a bit last minute, but if you'd like to join us, you still can. Just email me at adam at plot.ly. We hold these meetups once a month. So if you can't make it today, continue to email me and uh, I'll invite you for the next month's meeting. In a couple of weeks, we'll publish the next Dash Club newsletter where you can read all about the most recent developments in the world of Plotly and Dash and hear from Dash's author, Chris. Uh, we will also be sharing the next Plotly app building challenge for those who love building impressive Dash apps. So if you'd like to receive the newsletter or participate in the challenge, my colleague Ginny is going to share this link in the in the side panel that you just have to uh, click on. We are also participating in numerous in-person events. On February 7th, for example, we'll be in the UK for the Chief Data and Analytics Officers event. If you're in London, don't forget to stop by. So we have a few minute, minutes for questions. Alex, let me take a look here at some questions from the audience and shoot some your way. The first question, do, do I need Dash Enterprise to run Dash AG Grid? You do not. Um, so you don't need Dash Enterprise for uh, AG Grid community nor AG Grid Enterprise. Um, Dash AG Grid is, is being released fully open source uh, and fully free under the MIT license. And, and, and again, if you, if you do want to use the enterprise features of AG Grid, um, you will need to have a license from them to do that. Perfect. Um, the next question, since this is the alpha release, when will the full release and documentation be available? I don't have an exact date for that yet, but uh, sometime in the month of February. I'm hoping it'll be in two or three weeks. All right. What's, what's the difference between uh, an alpha version and a full release? Yeah, so the, the alpha version is kind of a preview. Um, it's fully functional. It, it, uh, you know, it's what we're working on right now. It's kind of the, um, the bleeding edge of the code. Um, <clears throat> there are those some things that we know that we need to clean up before we're ready to call it the full 2.0 release. And one of the biggest ones is um, finishing this uh, security push of, of being able to evaluate um, value getter and value formatter um, and a few other things uh, without having a, a potential for XSS. Um, but I think there, there will likely be some other API changes as well as we finish smoothing off all the rough edges. All right. So would it be accurate to say that the recommendation is if you want to play around with AG Grid, build nice, cool apps, definitely do so. But if you're intending to build something ginormous and maybe commercialize it, perhaps you should wait for the full release. Yeah, I think I, you know, I'd love to have people playing with it and giving us feedback. Um, and uh, we think it works uh, really well. And we know that it, that uh, you know a lot of our customers have been using it for a long time now. So um, it does have a robust base. Um, I would just say if you use the alpha version, 
um, there will be some things you'll need to change when you upgrade to the full release. Great. And to piggyback on what Alex said, if you um, we're looking for feedback. So if you if you um, saw something and you, I mean, we want you to share it with us. You can do so by either going on to the uh, forum community.plotly.com and sharing feedback there, or you can just you'll get a link to the uh, public repo that Alex mentioned, and you can always open an issue there. Yeah, I would say at the moment. Um, the code is moving really fast. Um, you know, Brian and Anne Marie uh, and I and a couple other people are are working really hard on it. So I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't go filing uh, GitHub bug reports and issues just yet because we might have already fixed some of those things. Um, but uh, definitely on the community forum, uh, you can find me there. And uh, and I'm happy to discuss. And you can also find uh, Brian and Anne Marie. Uh, who, are, who are much more active there than I am. But uh, yeah, all of us would love to chat about this. Sounds good. Thanks, Alex. Another question. I've used AG Grid for a while, but I'm new to Dash. So what's what's the advantage of using AG Grid with Dash? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if you've used AG Grid already, then you know that it's, it's uh, to be used in a kind of traditional uh, JavaScript app development uh, environment. And that means you're doing, um, you or your organization are doing uh, full stack development, which means that every time the browser needs to talk to the server to get some data, you need to coordinate between your back end team and your front end team. Um, and what Dash does is it collapses all of that into a single person, right? There's there's really no more API design um, for for you, the app developer, to do. You just um, create the the whole layout in Python, and there it is in the browser. So it's Everything. it's really about efficiency and and agility, being able to make uh, make apps quickly and very responsive to your uh, new ideas. And everything in Python for those Python enthusiasts. Yep. Um, all right, another question here. We have about three more minutes for questions. Um, can we connect the, um, the AG Grid filter to a callback to do server-side filtering? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this I know is uh, possible. I'm, I'm afraid I don't know the details of how to do it, um, so we'll have to get back to you with that. But uh, it's definitely possible. Um, I will say though that some of the you know that that gets pretty close to the server side row model stuff that I know is only a feature of AG Grid Enterprise. Um, AG Grid has has a very friendly model for how they deal with enterprise versus community. You can uh, you can trial their enterprise features all you like. Um, all you do is you get a little bit of a watermark if you're using them without a license key. Um, so you can find out whether it's something that would be valuable for you or not. Great, thank you, Alex. Uh, two more questions your way. Um, let me see here. Okay. All right, so this question is, well, I don't have the name of the person, but it's, uh, can, can AG Grid add or update into a Postgres database? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the ability to do, um, you know, writing back to your database, that's kind of what um, marks the difference between, say, a dashboard and an operations uh, tool that you might make. And, and Dash can make both of those. Um, you can do that with Dash AG Grid. You can do that with Dash Data Table. Um, and what it comes down to is being able to look at the full uh, row data prop uh, that, that contains all of the modifications that have been made by your user. 
um, or uh, if you're looking more granularly than that, uh, the selection changed prop that we used in the uh, in the first demo app where we were updating which uh, stock ticker we were showing data for. Yep, I remember that one. Um, one other question. This seems to be from our one of our uh, potentially one of our customers. What is new in Dash Enterprise? What is in the product pipeline for 2023 that you can share? Uh, all sorts of good stuff. Um, so the the biggest news recently with Dash Enterprise is the release of uh, version five to general availability. So that was a, a ground up rewrite of the Dash Enterprise platform. Uh, it's based on Kubernetes, so it's very scalable and robust and has a real, real modern interface. Um, it also gives people a lot more power over things like um, you know multiple users uh, working together on the same app um, and so so that one has already been released um, and it's it's out now available for all of our customers to to upgrade or to install um, new things that are coming in that regard um, we let's see um, We've got uh, some, oh, sorry, <laughs> we've got um, a bunch of interesting features around um, uh, installing this uh, on-premise as well as in your cloud environments. Um, we're also planning some upgrades to the uh, dashboard engine and dash design kit. Uh, in the coming year, um, so those will be uh, extending the the power and flexibility of both of those tools. Exciting, pretty pretty big stuff. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we weren't able to answer all the questions today, but we will follow up via email for uh, those that we weren't able to answer. Um, feel free to reach out to info at plotly.com. Again, that's info at plotly.com if you have any additional questions. I would also like to close us out by saying that um, I really appreciate and I'm grateful to uh, a few people. Um, first of all, uh, Nathan, uh, my colleague that a few years ago actually uh, put everything together and started together with Alex, the, the uh, AG Grid, and then Anne-Marie and Brian uh, for actually uh, picking everything up a few months ago and, and open sourcing and build this, improving this wonderful product that we have. If you'd like to play around, I mean, we invite you to play around with the Dash AJ Grid and build stuff, uh, and we'd love to see your apps. Uh, just uh, don't forget to share them on the Plotly forum, uh, which is community.plotly.com, uh, by using the show and tell tag. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Alex, thank you for this wonderful presentation. Thank and you, Adam, and thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.